In a previous video, I showed you how I paint the blue armor of my ultramarines uh, using contrast paints and metallic undercoats to create quite a cool, quite easy to do style. A lot of people ask me how to do the rest of the ultramarines, uh, all the rest of the details on the models. Uh, and so today I'm gonna take you through how to paint your models from this to this. Uh, using, I'm going to use a squad of intercessors to show you how it's done um, because it's March from a crag just ended uh, and I've got a lot of these Phobos marines to do um, so I'm going to start with these and see how far we get Okay, base coats. So for this scheme, I am using primarily blue, obviously, for the armor, red for the trim, because I'm doing the third company, um, and then yellow, or gold, actually, for, for a lot of the accent colors, like the decoration and stuff. Um, the rest of the colors that I'm using are quite neutral, things like brown and silver and black. Um, and so the main colors being blue, red, and yellow gives you what's called, a, I think, a primary triad. Um, and if you're trying to figure out how to do a color scheme, um, doing some sort of pri a triad like that on the color wheel, um, like this, I'll show you. Um, doing something like a primary triad or one of the other triads that you can do is a really effective way of getting a good color scheme without really having to know loads and loads about color theory. I certainly don't. If you were going to do a different company, so you weren't doing the third company, you're doing the second company with their sort of gold uh, trim or one of the others, um, I would probably swap out the black of the weapon casing for red, the sort of classic red of the Ultramarines, because um, that allows you to keep that primary triad if you do something like the second company, um, which is a really effective sort of visual element to the scheme, I think. Um, but obviously I'm going with the third company, which has red trim, and so the black is fine. So you just want to put your base coats down for all of the colors using two thin coats. Um, a tip for this is that you want to make sure that you go slightly over, or at least very, very close to the edge of each section of color when you're painting the base coats in. Um, with some schemes, if it's, for example, black or dark armor, um, you can get away with just sort of painting the raised surfaces of the other places and the shadowy areas remain black or dark, and it doesn't really matter if you get paint all the way up to them. Um, but with a scheme like this, with a, with a bright blue armor, um, you want to really make sure you get all the way to the edges of those, otherwise the elements will look odd. So for the shoulder pads, I always make sure to go over the edge and down the little raised portion of the shoulder pad. And the same with things like pouches, belts, um, and the, uh, the ribbing and undersuit parts of these models. So this is what your model should look like at this point, um, when you've got all the base coats down. So next you want to move on to your shades. Um, and it's really important to use shade colors that will unify this scheme. We've used quite a lot of different colors. Yes, we've got our primary triad of blue, yellow, and red. And we've also got brown and silver and black in there as well. Uh, and so using shades to unify all of these colors together um, helps make the scheme uh, come, come together and helps make the models look like they live in a world. Uh, and so the main shade color that I'm using is actually purple. Um, and I'm not, that doesn't mean I am shading everything with purple, but I am introducing purple tones into a lot of the shadows. So um, on the shoulder pad trim, I'm using a red shade, but again, as with the previous step, I'm making sure to get all the way down and over the edges of where the red ends and the blue of the armor begins. And that introduces a purple tone into the shadow, obviously, because red mixes with blue. With the gold sections, um, I'm just shading them purple, and so that brings in purple um, to the scheme there. For the blue sections, we've already done the armor with the contrast paints, but Talisar Blue definitely has a purple tinge to it, uh, and so you bring in purple there, which also unifies the scheme. And then the other shade that we're using um, is brown, and I'm going to use that on the silver and on the brown sections, and that again unifies them, and also using brown on silver very much 
contrasts with the undertones of silver on the blue. Um, so the brown shade is not at all like the silver undertone on the armor, and it just helps those parts stand out. So once your shading is done, um, your models should look something like this. Uh, and then we're going to move on to our highlights. And there's not an awful lot of highlights to do on this scheme. Uh, it's quite fast, it's quite quick, and it's quite rough and ready. Um, you'll find that putting the shades in, and especially if you do how I've done it, um, been not that neat, you actually bring quite a lot of interest into the armor color. It doesn't just look blue, it's got these little bits of brown, that purple shade we talked about. Um, and so you don't need loads and loads of highlights to make these models pop. And really quite importantly, you don't really need any accurate edge highlights. Yeah, we did that with the blue armor, we added some edge highlights in, in the silver. Um, but the rest of these highlights that we're doing on these colors, you don't need to know how to edge highlight properly. I certainly can't do it. Uh, and so we, every time I come up with a scheme, I try to minimize the amount of edge highlighting that we try to do. Um, so with the brown, we're just going to highlight this a couple of times using lighter browns. And the idea with this is that these are leather parts that have been used, they're worn, uh, and so you can have scratchy highlights, your edge highlights don't have to be neat, you can just put paint where you, where you think the leather would be worn, um, and that works fine. Um, for the black, all we're going to do is dry brush it with uh, Dawnstone or another light grey. Uh, and so you don't need to worry really about that in any edge highlighting kind of way. Um, just gives it a nice little bit of interest. Um, for the red, this is where you need to be the most neat, but Space Marine shoulder pads are not that difficult to edge highlight. They've got nice crisp edges. And so I'm just using a bright red and then an orange uh, on the very edges to finish those sections off. The final thing to mention, I think, is the skin. Um, there's not a lot of skin on these models, um, but I've done two different kinds of skin tone, a lighter skin tone and a darker skin tone. Um, and then I've painted the hair slightly differently as well. I've done a white hair uh, and a blonde hair. Um, for the skin tone, I've used, for the lighter skin tone, I've just used Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint and then highlighted that with like a light flesh tone. Uh, and for the darker skin, I've done a brown base coat I used purple to shade it, um, again, unifying the scheme, and then just re-highlighted with the base tone. Uh, and then for the hair, I just used various contrast paints over, I think, Wraithbone or Gracia. Now we're really on to finishing touches. Um, for these models, there are quite a lot of lenses. And so how I paint lenses is really easy. Um, we just paint them in Celestra Grey or some other sort of off-white that's a little bit dark. Um, and then we use the Night Haunt Green technical paint uh, all across them in a single coat, um, which has a really unique finish uh, and makes those areas stand out a little bit more. Uh, and then you just need to paint your bases and add your transfers, um, which we will go over in a separate video, I think, uh, and your models should be done. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you found some of the things that we talked about today useful. Even if you're not painting ultramarines, if you're painting something else, uh, you might find some of these tips or some of the ways that I paint certain colors useful. Let me know if there's anything that I should change for the next one of these kinds of videos that I do. This is the first time that I've actually filmed a step-by-step -step painting guide. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.